today, I'm going to be showing you how to remove the timing belt and the water pump from a V6 Honda Accord. This car had been driving for quite some time over its service interval, which for the timing belt is 90,000 miles. When it began making noise, we decided to stop driving and order parts to prevent further risk of engine failure. First, you want to start out by jacking the passenger side of the car up and setting the car on a jack stand, for safety. Then, take off the wheel by removing the five 19mm lug nuts that hold it on. Once the wheel's removed, you'll want to take off the plastic cover that sits in front of the engine by pulling the two clips holding it on. To remove these clips, I recommend some creative use of a flathead screwdriver. Once removed, grab the cover and fold it somewhere out of the way. Next, we will remove the drive belt. To do this, you will either need a 14mm wrench or a ratchet. The tensioner takes some force to move, so be prepared to put some weight into it. If using a ratchet, be sure it's unloosened so you can push towards the back of the car to detension the belt. Next step will be removing the power steering suction line, which is clamped onto the front of the pump and not bolted to the top of it. To prevent fluid from getting all over the pulleys below, I will clamp the line using vice grips. If you choose to do this, be sure not to fully close the jaws, as that will likely split the line. Leave about half a centimeter or a slightly larger opening to allow the hose space to flatten out. Find something to plug the pump as well. In this case, I used a rag to keep fluid from pouring out. But the best solution I've learned has been to use a valve stem from a tire. It is the perfect size to seal the inlet. Now we get to the two 12 mm bolts that hold the pump on. The first is very easy to get to. It is visible right next to the pulley towards the firewall. The second one though isn't quite as easy. It is hidden underneath the pulley just above the engine mount bracket. Once the two fasteners are removed, grab the pump and set it aside. When you move it aside, you'll notice a 10mm bolt holding down the harness to the engine mount bracket. Go ahead and remove this now so that you don't forget it later. The next part we will remove will be the crankshaft pulley. It is also the only part that gave me any real trouble. Pretty much any other Honda crank bolt will do this though. We first tried the obvious and easy way to break it loose, an impact tool. But as often the case with impacts and Honda bolts, it couldn't get the job done. The next method I tried was the same one I used in this Honda Odyssey video. But it was not quite as successful this time. As a final resort, we bumped the key to see which way the engine rotated. Since it rotated clockwise, I was able to put my ratchet on loosen and wedge it under the tie rod. This way, we could use the starter to break the bolt loose. Once broken loose, the impact was used to remove the bolt faster. Upon removal, we noticed that someone had put RTV on the threads. And please, for the love of whoever has to work on this after you, which may even be you, do not do this. If you want to get technical, Honda torque specs for the crank bolt require you to apply oil to parts of the fastener, and RTV is on the complete other end of the spectrum from oil. Luckily, once the bolt is removed, you will hardly ever have trouble removing a Honda crank pulley. Simply grab both sides and wiggle it off. Next, we will be removing the drive belt tensioner. To do this, you will need a 12mm socket and a 14mm wrench to remove the two bolts holding it on. One thing that can be said about this 14mm bolt is that it is very long-winded. With the tensioner out of the way, we have access to all the timing cover bolts, and we'll start by removing the right side cover. There are 5 10mm bolts holding each of the top covers on. Use this diagram to help you locate them and remove them. The main bolt I struggled with was this back one on the rear timing cover. I had to use a wrench to break it loose, but the good thing about these bolts is that once broken loose they can easily be spun by hand.
Now we're gonna go ahead and go back down and remove the lower timing cover. To remove this, it's the same deal as the top. You just remove all the 10mm fasteners that are holding it on. Once all the fasteners are removed, the cover will just pull right off. With the covers off, we can take a good guess at what was making all the noise we heard. Before we continue taking off parts, we're going to check and be sure that we are at cylinder 1 TDC. To do this, look at your front cam gear and make sure the one line on the cam gear and the indentation on the cylinder head line up. Then, go down to the crankshaft and make sure the arrow on the sprocket and the arrow on the oil pump line up. If they do not, put the bolt back on the crankshaft and use a ratchet to turn the engine clockwise until TDC is reached. Next to be removed will be the engine mount bracket. To take it off, grab a 10mm socket, a 14mm socket, and also a 17mm socket. Before removing any fasteners, be sure that you have the engine supported by a jack to keep from damaging any of the threads as the bolts are pulled out. Also use a piece of wood in between the jack and the engine to prevent damage to the oil pan. Next, use the 17mm to remove the bolt holding the bracket to the mount. Then use the 14mm to remove the bracket from the engine. You can remove this spacer from the crankshaft. Just make note of which side was contacting the belt. You should be able to see a witness mark left by the belt on one side. With the bracket removed, you can lower the engine. We will be using the 17mm socket again to remove the bolts holding the mount to the body of the car. With the mount removed, we have much better access to the three 14mm bolts holding the bracket to the engine. What I do next is why you want to be 100% sure you have the engine at TDC. If you cut the belt like I'm doing, you'll have no easy way of getting the cams back to TDC since they're spring loaded. And now we can actually see just how bad this water pump was. I don't think there's a spot on this gasket that's still holding fluid. Next, we'll be using a 14mm to remove this pivot bolt from the tensioner arm. You only have to remove the other idler if you plan on replacing it. In this case, we were. Next, we will remove the tensioner by taking off the two 10mm bolts holding it on. The last bolts we will be removing are the five remaining 10mm bolts holding on the water pump. Next, you'll want to use something to pop the water pump away from the engine. Be ready to have something blow whenever all the coolant comes running out of it, because there will be a lot.
Yep, that's our problem. You can hear exactly how horrible that water pump is. Hey, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If this video helped you out, let me know by leaving a like. If not, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know what you guys think and what I could have done better. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'm glad to help. I try to help out as much as possible. Just most of all, let me know what you guys think. And thanks for watching.